fact that they have an ability to find damage after we've left, after the final inspection, is so wrong. It's a story that shocked people across the country, and it's getting bigger. Allegations that budget rent-a-car in Vancouver often overbilled its customers. Our Go Public reporter Kathy Tomlinson has already filed several reports, but now some former budget employees have contacted her, saying the scam was systemic and admitting their role on camera. So what exactly did the whistleblower say? Here once again is Kathy Tomlinson. Many, many visitors traveling through Vancouver have rented a car at budget, thinking they were getting a good deal. The price they paid, though, came as a nasty shock. Surprise extra charges, hundreds of dollars put through their credit cards. Vancouver area budget franchises are owned by Sid Bellsberg, a prominent businessman who wins awards for philanthropy, lives in a stunning mansion, and races horses on the side. These are some of his former employees here to blow the whistle on how Bellsberg made his money. They say by systematically deceiving customers and ripping them off. We would consciously uh, lie to people. Like i will use the word lie and i will use the word swindle. It was by design. I, I had personal meetings with the owner, with the general manager. I know how I participated in that. And a lot of times I should have just said no. It was like um, a big grab of money, like unbelievable. Lots of money being made on a daily basis, um, dishonestly. And, and you were part of it. And finally I got out. I don't think they should be, I, I'm not saying I want to do it like Dylan said, I honestly do it ethically. I don't think they should be in business doing what they're doing. Bellsberg owns several budget outlets, the busiest at Vancouver's airport. Dylan Paul managed the downtown location and says he feels terrible about what he did. The main reason I'm here, first of all, is, is to apologize. The scheme, he says, was to upsell customers insurance or upgrades they didn't want or need. Then later, slap them with a minimum $300 bogus charge for minor vehicle damage. And I've personally talked to Sid when, uh, in the middle of the summer, a lot of people are renting cars, and a car would come in and would charge the person $1,000 for the windshield and tell them we're going to send it to get repaired. And 30 minutes after that customer has left, we'll rent that same car to someone else. I personally... Without repairing it. Without repairing it. It's a scratch this small. They charge you $350 for it, and they say it's not worth fixing. How many times do you think those vehicles weren't even fixed? Oh... You, 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 you can't, I, I, I can't, it's countless. I mean... You're putting on a show. Yes. We're so, we, uh, we tell customers, please let me go ask the manager in the back, and there is no manager in the back. The shop that did the estimates and repair bills is also owned by Bellsberg. Customers were led to believe it was independent when it was not. We are all operating under the same business concept, business idea, which is find damages and charge people. They say budget even charged people more for fuel than what the vehicle tanks could hold. If you add up what happened with the dishonest sales tactics, the damage, the stuff like the fuel, it's easily millions of dollars. Millions? Easily. Easily. You're saying that this company made millions of dollars through deceptive practices. I have no doubt about it. Graham Derbyshire was lead customer service agent in charge of this suburban outlet. Ripping off customers, he says, was mandatory. If you said, I'm not going to do this anymore, this isn't right. Get out of here. It's, yeah, it's my way. It's budget's way or the highway with everything from top to bottom. It more so Sid Bellsberg's way. What percentage of what you charged people was unfair? 70, 65, 70 percent? More than 50 percent? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've had people cry. People cry because they can't afford and we're charging them $1,000 for a windshield and it doesn't cost that, you know, and, and if someone did that to my wife, it would just break my heart and that was the reason I left. What's more, these ex-employees say bilking foreigners was budget specialty. We knew, one, these are foreigners. The chance of them complaining is very unlikely. And to the language barrier, 
They, they, they don't know. Ex-customer service agent Ellie Daher remembers when his manager spotted a wealthy customer from Hong Kong. She was flagged to pay more. We charged the lady $4,000 a week for renting the car. $4,000 a week? For a Mercedes uh, C-Class, $4,000 a week. I did it. How much would you normally charge for that car? One ninety nine a day. Yeah, if you rented it today, it's seventy three dollars. So How do you feel about that? Not bad, really bad. I always used to joke around with the guy saying, "I um, I hope I don't get hit by a bus." I didn't feel good about myself working for the company. I had to. I had to make money. They all got a small percentage of the profits. The more they overcharged customers, especially for damage, the more they made. You walk in through the door, you're a dollar sign, and and and. People would laugh that uh, we were man we're able to squeeze as much money as we can from you. The whole system and budget is based on um, on a commission. This is pure greed. Greed at its best. And you know, I've had it up to here with greed. This sounds like fraud. Because it was on purpose. Fraud is fraud is the right word. If it's done knowingly, and it's done with the knowledge of the owner. We tried many times to talk to owner Sid Bellsberg, but never heard back. Early on, his manager told us he had no evidence of wrongdoing. Now he says the employee commissions for finding damage have been scrapped. He also says estimates for repairs will be done by an independent appraiser, the repairs at an independent shop. No jobs will be lost, he says, but anyone who misleads customers will be fired. He's the same manager who ordered us out of his office when we first started looking into this. Why won't you talk to us about I these complaints? No comment, so please leave. Also, as a result of our inquiries, Consumer Protection BC, the provincial watchdog agency, is looking into this. They say because the allegations point to possible fraud, they've also alerted the RCMP. It is being taken very seriously. BC's justice minister says those agencies now want to hear from affected customers and from budget employees, past or current. If there is any sense that there's any criminal wrongdoing here, we need to make sure that people are reporting their concerns to the RCMP. The situation is reprehensible. It's something that cries out for a remedy. David Klein, well-known class action lawyer, says customers who feel ripped off have a strong case. Based on what I've seen, a lawsuit is definitely viable. The challenge will be in capturing all of the claims for all of the people who are spread across the country. A voluntary payment by budget would be preferable. The ex-employees hope something good comes from going public. Step forward and say what's going on. Don't be afraid. You're in Canada. I believe in Canada. That's why I'm here. And I'm glad this company is, uh, and the people behind it are being shown to who they really are. Still, they're skeptical. Even now, with all this coming to light, you know, you don't have the owner or the GM come out and apologize for it. It's giving the corporate budget a bad name as well, because the licensee of British British Columbia is doing it differently than how budget down in Minnesota is doing it. And I think that it needs to be regulated across the whole board. Budget's corporate head office in the U.S. does have the power to enforce changes inside the Bellsburg operation. It has put his franchises under investigation and says more changes may come. And Kathy joins us from Vancouver. So any sense these practices are happening at budgets in the rest of Canada? We have no proof of that at all, Wendy. The budget outlets are independently owned. However, Mr. Bellsberg does own several of them in B.C. We have had some complaints about these type of practices elsewhere, but most of what we're hearing is from people in B.C. affected by this operation. We've got hundreds of emails, close to 300 so far, from people who say they were affected. Wow. And Budget B.C. has responded tonight to the work you've done on this. What are they saying? Yes, we've just had the latest statement that we've got from them, and it says the uh, Budget BC is shocked by the remarks ba made by these ex-employees. They take the allegations very seriously. They take great pride in the excellent service that they give to their customers. And under no circumstances, they say, would we condone any business practice that does not serve the best interest of our customers. All right. Well, thanks so much, Kathy. Our Go Public reporter, Kathy Tomlinson in Vancouver. So, how can you avoid the kind of outrageous rental car charges Kathy exposed? Well, here are some tips. Before purchasing rental car insurance, call your own insurance company and your credit card provider to see if you're covered through one of them.
Don't drive a rental car off the lot without looking it over closely with someone from the company and get a signed document indicating where any existing scratches or dents were found. Take photos too. When you return the car, have an agent reinspect the vehicle with you and sign off on it. If you're dropping off the vehicle after hours, get that camera out again so you can prove you left the car in good condition. Now, if you've got a tip for us about a story of wrongdoing, you can send the information through our website. That's cbcnews.ca slash the national and click on the link to our Go Public page.